Welcome to Electron Line, and now we're going to start a new series on optics. This series will be a little bit more advanced than the previous op optic set that we've put together so far. And uh, we'll start with some basic concepts, and then we'll work our way through some of the development of how many of the equations were derived in optics. So here we're starting with uh, what we call the thin lens equation. We're just going to introduce you to, to the equation. Here we have a typical thin lens. Notice that the curvature of the two sides of the lens are different from one another. This is the uh, front side of the lens, this is the back side of the lens. Typically the convention is that we go from left to right. So there I have the arrow over there, and let me draw an arrow this way as well. So we expect the rays to go through the lens like this. We expect your observer to be on the right side of the lens. So that's simply by convention. Now, notice the radius of curvature. If we continue the back side of the lens all the way around like this, R2 here represents the radius of curvature of the back side of the lens. And here if we continue the front side of the lens all the way through, we can see that R1 represents the curvature of the front side of the lens. Now it turns out that if the front side of the lens is bulged this way forward towards the front like that, that is a, what we would call a positive curvature, which we indicate right here. And on the back side of the lens, notice that it's bent towards the other side, and we call that a negative curvature. So we call this a positive radius and a negative radius. Whatever the number is, however many centimeters or meters this radius is, on the front side, since it's bulged to the left, we call it a positive radiance. On the back side, since it's bulging to the right, we call that a negative radiance. And the equation takes care of that, because typically a converging lens has the left side bulging to the left and the right side or the back side bulging to the right. So that, got, that gives the two sides to the lens that make it converging. Notice that in this case, the front side of the lens or the left side of the lens is bulging to the right. That gives the radius a negative quantity here. So that would cause this to be a diverging lens. But notice that the curvature of the back side is smaller, meaning there's more of a bend to it, that means this side overpowers this lens, so this is a converging side of the lens, this is the diverging side of the lens, but this overpowers this, so as a whole, this will become a converging lens. On the other hand, notice that here on the left side, or the front side of the lens, this gives a bulging to the left, which gives that a converging uh, property for the lens. On the right, we have a diverging property of the lens, because it's bending to the left like that, so, but since this is a smaller curvature than this, this will overpower the, the left side or the back side will overpower the front side. So as a whole, this becomes a diverging lens. So typically, you'd say a converging lens looks like that, a diverging lens looks like this. And if there's a combination of the two sides, so here, this looks like converging, this is diverging, but since this has a smaller curvature, this overpowers that, so that becomes a converging. Here, since this is a smaller curvature, this overpowers that, so it becomes diverging. So I hope that makes sense. Now, to find the focal length of a lens like that, we have the equation right here that says 1 over the focal length is equal to n sub l divided by n sub m minus 1. Now, what is n sub l and n sub m? Well, n sub l is the index of refraction of the lens, and m sub, n sub m is the index of refraction of the medium around the lens. Now, typically, that is air, but it doesn't have to be. The lens could be submerged in water, or the lens could be submerged in some other medium that makes the relative ratio between the n sub l and n sub m different than if it was air. Now, of course, if n sub m is air, then n sub m would be 1. So if, if air, then we can say that m sub m equals 1, and the equation then simplifies to 1 over f equals n sub l minus 1 times 1 over r1 minus 1 over r2. Now this is the typical equation that, that you might see in most textbooks or most classrooms, but if the medium outside the lens is other than air, we have to write the equation like that. Now what happens if m, n sub m is greater, so what if n sub m is greater than n sub l? So the index of refraction of the medium around the lens is greater than the index of refraction of the lens itself. And there are some special cases where this could happen. Well, if that's the case, notice if n sub l is smaller than n sub m, that ratio will be less than 1. That means that n sub l 
my, divided by n sub m minus 1, since this is less than 1 and subtract 1 from it, this is a number that is negative. This is less than 1. That becomes a negative quantity, which means it reverses the, the uh, lens. And what I mean by it, it inverses the lens, meaning a lens that normally would be converging would now act like a diverging lens, and a lens that normally would act like a diverging lens will now act like a converging lens if the index of refraction of the lens is smaller than the index of refraction of the medium around it. So take, uh, be careful of that. So in the next video, I will actually show you an example how we use this equation, how we actually figure out how to calculate the focal length of a lens. So again, notice that we always, by convention, imagine that the rays go through the lens from left to right. So that would then be the convention for the curvature of the surface of the lens. Now, it doesn't matter if it's the front or the back of the lens. For example, here, this is therefore what we call a negative curvature in the front we call that a positive curvature and the equation will take care of the fact that this still makes this a converging lens uh, because of this negative sign in here be associated with 1 over r2 all right um, let's say one more thing of course if we have a lens that looks like this where the front side has no radius at all, and the radius of curvature, meaning it is a flat surface, then of course in the case of flat surface, r is considered to be infinite, and then if we go back to the equation, 1 over infinity goes to 0, so the, the factor for the front end of the lens here would simply become 0 minus 1 over r2. So in this case, the front side of the lens would have no bearing on the focal length, it would not either increase or decrease it, but be kind of uh, in the, uh, the focal length would be independent of the front side. There would be no effect of the front side because the front side is flat. All right, that gives you a nice little introduction to the thin lens equation. I'll show you how that equation can be derived later on, but in the next videos I will show you how to actually use this equation. So if you're interested, stay tuned.